Hi, it's a great pleasure to be with you in this event. I will briefly present you my text that I prepared for, uh, for you. And after that, we can move to questions or chat a little bit. My purpose in this presentation is not to argue for the immortality of the soul. To prove that reality is more than matter, that human life is more than the animal life, is one of the greatest contributions we could possibly offer to humanity. But it is not sufficient to acquire strong conviction in the spiritual dimension of life. It is necessary to live according to it. To develop the life of a spirit evolving in the direction of a greater life in communion with the absolute spirit. That's the task. We have now evidence from the scientific research on parapsychology and spirituality that suggests, it may be not definitive, but it suggests the survival of our consciousness to bodily death. Parapsychology, that for many is still a controversial field, is rare, rarely discredited by serious researchers that dedicated time to disprove its results. Spirituality and health on its turn is one of the fastest growing research areas in the field of the health sciences. If we consider only the phenomenon of near-death experiences which occur in all countries and has been registered by dozens of thousands of cases, empirical data seems to be now inviting us to review our basic concepts about nature. We also always had support from the greatest philosophers for this idea. Plato, Aristotle, Aquinas, Descartes, Leibniz, Kant, William James, or Kurt Gödel, and many other great thinkers offered arguments for the immortality of the soul, not from a religious perspective, but as a purely rational investigation of the matter. Today, however, we would like to move from the conviction that these arguments and evidence provide, and even faith could possibly provide to some, to the consequences of being assured about the immortality of the soul. These consequences are ethical and existential. That is to say, our behavior changes and our inner state of life changes in the face of this shift of consciousness. For being persuaded that we are immortal offers a strong defense against the temptations, the troubles of life, vices, and uh, all of this are actually boosted by the presum presupposition of a purely and exclusive physical and material existence. Socrates, 25 centuries ago, observed that moral relativism and irrationalism would lead society to its doom, to its complete fragmentation. Since then, philosophers, saints, spiritual leaders and masters have always addressed the issue of moral relativism as a great concern. Moral relativism is a consequence of metaphysical and practical ignorance about the world, about how life works. When we lack a strong philosophical view, and that is a metaphysical view, we cannot distinguish ethics from the rule of strength, power, and wealth. 
Relativism is ultimately the ethics of strength, for it denies the existence of reliable, universal, moral rules and standards. Philosophers and spiritual leaders always observed that moral universal rules are directly related to stability. Even when these philosophers were materialists, they recognized that while our physical lives may be too short and transitory, universal moral rules have to remain valid before and after our carnal lives. It is logical, therefore, to connect a temporal permanent moral rules to a parallel <clears throat> expectation of conserving our lives and consciousness after the grave. Zoroaster, Egyptian Book of the Dead, ancestor worship in all cultures, as in China, for example. The idea of rebirth among the Yoruba people in West Africa and the idea of karma in India all show how ancient the concept of reward and punishment is. You can translate the old concept of reward and punishment as a new version of the concept of responsibility. Of course, if life is to end after the death of the body, virtuous people with hard, miserable lives and evil people with comfortable, privileged lives prove that evil wins in the end and is worth. As the Apostle Paul observed in his own terms, if there is no resurrection, no afterlife. Men should rather eat and drink and have fun, for tomorrow we will die. Modern philosopher Immanuel Kant realized that this connection between an expectation of unending life and the cosmic moral order in the form of a system of reward and punishment they both formed a postulation demanded by reason. That is to say, no rational being fails to consider this option, at least as an option. For measuring the consequences of our actions in an expanded afterlife is a very natural and reasonable way of making sense of moral life ethical life. Without this expansion, we are condemned to have an ethical theory that is unfulfilling and loses existential appeal. Pessimistic thinkers from antiquity to our days, however, have been claiming that human life does lack objective purpose and meaning exactly because metaphysical concepts about an afterlife and a cosmic moral order are nothing but cultural inventions. Pessimistic thinkers such as Friedrich Nietzsche, not much more than one century ago, correctly concluded that if moral order does not exist, if souls are not immortal and we have to live in the horizon of this carnal life, it is pointless to hold moral doctrines and respect moral rules, which are nothing more than uh, artificial abstractions. They have to be invented and therefore they have to be relative. Lies to control those of weaker will and consciousness. Allan Kardec, the philosopher that 
founded a new way to interpret religion on the light of scientifically scrutinized spiritual phenomena in the mid of 19th century are that materialism was among the philosophical attitudes the most detrimental to our well-being and morality and this because materialism encloses our lives in a narrow horizon of bodily existence limited in time and possibility by assuming that we are no more than animals with new thinking capacities materialism also rejects the objective connection between our essential beings and moral order it is a consequence of materialistic thinking that ethics may lack sufficient ground and therefore morality may be seen as a cultural invention the practical consequences of this posture are before our eyes right now in this society a fragmented society where individualism led us to a radical form of isolation in the middle of the crowd of despair indifference apathy lack of sense and purpose in life cynicism and nihilism pains all too familiar to everyone in these days we should not underestimate the anguish and existential indifference produced by nihilism and relativism it is certainly influenced it certainly influenced a way of life in which immediate results are the only goals for many and it weakened our mental capacities to deal with failure and frustration <clears throat> mental resilience since the ancient cultures in china or greece in india or the americas was associated with the mastery of the soul over the body only the concept of a mind and a soul that governs the body can we prepare ourselves to resist physical pain psychological struggle and moral suffering on the positive side of the coin we have plenty of examples of persons that were heroes and saints all of them mastered the circumstances or adapted to it with dignity all of them mastered the circumstances and there was never a hero or a saint submitted that submitted him or herself to the accident of material life even materialists in theory can only be great people when they are spiritualists in practice that is relevant to to repeat to even materialists in theory that claim to be materialists and truly believe in materialism in theory they can only be great people they can only make great sacrifices when they are spiritualists in practice when they act as they were spiritualists for being a spiritualist means according to alan kardec and also alan kardec works to submit to domesticate or tame and to overcome matter taming the passions that would otherwise submit us to matter in every motivational speech we can find and there are uncountable on youtube regardless what the speaker believes we always see a very strong practical spiritualism 
on the bottom of the discourse you can do it ignore pain this is temporary so we can also ask what is permanent you are building something greater than that always envisioning the ideal the transcendent something that transcend circumstance and moment say no to the naysayers or you can do everything that's not a practical advice if we do not believe in an infinite spirit that can overcome the limitations of matter they are uh, the naysayers they are only looking to the present failure do not be afraid of failing that's also very recurrent it only makes you stronger now from the materialistic perspective every failure makes us closer to the ultimate failure of death of destruction and we should rather avoid failure at all costs pain is not temporary this pain in my knee may be temporary but next week there will be a new pain statistics do work and they say that very few people can be on the top and even though we are excited by the perspective of being larger than the box everything in us wants and struggles to be a spirit that takes control of its destiny everything in us wants to be more than this aging dying body and that is what makes every one of us a spiritualist thank you very much Thank you.